Okay, I just want to show you a quick example on how to take a, a data set and create a stem and leaf plot. So you notice here there's um, 30 pieces of data. Uh, it says weights of randomly selected women. So remember how a stem and leaf plot is. It, you create some stems here, and then uh, each stem uh, traditionally has leaves that start in order. You know, they, the lowest leaf starts here and then goes outward. Um, you know, the, the value of the leaves is always the lowest place value of your data set. So when you look at your data values individually, you see that they're in the hundreds. So, you know, these are the, there's the ones place right there, and this right here is the tens place and the hundreds place. So traditionally, the leaves are the lowest place value of your data set, which in this case happens to be the ones. So since the ones place value for the data is going to go over here in the leaf column, then the stems are going to have everything else. So the stems, for example, will be tens, 11s, 12s, dot, dot, dot. And you can see it goes 13, 14, 15. Then it jumps all the way to uh, 21 for this 210 pound person. So notice there's no 160 pounds, 170 pounds, dot, dot, dot. However, the 150s and the, two, and the 200s, they're not right next to each other. So we have to account for those when we put them in our stems. So the first thing you do is you identify your lowest place value. You realize those are going to be leafs. You identify that everything else to the left of the lowest place value is going to be the stems. And then you pop the stems on there. So I'm going to click in here and start putting the stems in. So the stems, uh, 10, 11, 12, and so on and so forth. Now, once again, notice that I don't have any, for instance, 170 pound people in my data set. However, I'm still keeping space for that. Again, showing that the 157 pound person, which is going to be in the uh, stem for 15, is not right next to the 210 pound person. So once you do this, all you have to do is start popping the leaves in. So this first um, person, which is 108 pounds, so there's the one zero for the stem of 10. The leaf is going to be an eight. You pop the eight in there. Now there's no other uh, uh, stems that have a 10 on it. So then you move down to your next uh, leaf. Um, I'm sorry, stem. So now the, the uh, stem 11 is 1, 2, 3, 4. And notice there's four of them. So uh, 110, 111, and two 119s. So there's going to be a 0 there for that 110, a 1, and then two 9s. The two 9s, obviously, are for the 219 pound people. <laughs> you continue this procedure straight down. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill them all in. Notice data values that are repeated they get their individual leaves because you know they count. If you left one of them off, then you, your, your table would have, uh, say, only um, you know, 29 pieces of data instead of 30. All right, so let's just continue with this. So the leaves for this are going to be uh, 11555, 66799. Six, OK, so there's the leaves for the 120s. Pop the Leafs 130s in there. So that's 1, 2, 2, 3, 7, 7, 9, 9. All right, and the 140s, 1, 2, 3, 9. Uh, the 150s, 0, 2, 7. And then the 210 person is all the way down here. All right, so notice um, the data set, with the exception of this value right here, if we just ignore this value, the shape of it, if I trace the, you know, the general shape, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a general idea, but if you trace along this, it peaks and then kind of comes down. This shape is kind of a bell shape, ignoring the 210. So, you know, a statistician would have to make a decision here. You know, is this 210, does it actually belong there? Maybe it was a typo. Maybe the person recording data meant to record 110, which would make a lot more sense, being that all the people are clustered over here. This, you know, having this one person, you know, they could be considered an outlier. You know, remember, an outlier is a data value that's far away from all the other data values. So maybe this was supposed to be a 110, and this person should be in this uh, stem over here. You know, we can't tell that, but, you know, a statistician would make that decision. So if you decide to leave this data out, you know, a statistician may, may, may say, you know what, I, I'm going to get rid of that data value because I don't, I don't think it belongs. So in which case, I'm going to go ahead and look at the shape of the remaining distribution, which you can see is kind of a bell shape. 
Now, what if that statistician said, you know what, no, this data value, it's supposed to be here. I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, well, then, when you peek out right away, you can see the tail kind of goes off to the right, and you'd have a longer tail on the right-hand side. Now, I know this thing's sideways, but if you kind of grab this uh, portion of the graph right here and drag it up top, you'd see that the 210 would be on the right-hand side, and you'd have a longer tail on the right, and then, you know, I would say that the shape of the distribution would be skewed to the right. So remember, your skewness of a distribution is determined by which tail is longer. When the two tails are approximately the same um, uh, distance or a stretch, uh, you call that a symmetrical skew. But this clearly would be stretched to the right if we leave that 210 in. Again, whose uh, ultimate decision is that? Well, that would be the guy in charge of the project. So if you were the statistician in charge, you'd have to make a decision on what you're going to do with this person. Some statisticians would say, leave that person in. That's the data value. That's the data value. Other um, statisticians would have an assumption for someone that was far away and assume that was a mistake, and they'd pop them somewhere in the middle, You know, because that's as you can see. Most people are in the 120s and 130s here.